Going through my social media channels today, I saw a comment from a friend of mine who said something to the effect that you've gone through school, you spend a lot of money and a lot of time, maybe 20 plus years, but there is no return on investment. And uh, of course, that applies to as many people as you can think of. And then some friend also went and commented just below that and said something very profound. They say that those prerequisites open doors for me. Motivational books challenge me to go for things I want. Investing in training outside university walls enable me to use my education to think and reposition myself with a new knowledge. Because my focus is now on supporting others to be the best versions of themselves, I'm now in school studying to become an effective coach. The more learning I go for, the better quality of my conversations. And I said, in effect, I said that, in other words, the education was not necessarily supposed to point you directly to a job but to equip you so that you can explore your potential to the fullest and then deploy it. Unfortunately, that is not the way it has been sold. And in the same breath, in the same breath, we want to discuss in this episode one of the reasons as to why you are not seeing return on investments on your purpose pursuit. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Should everything that we do in life have a return on investment? Is one of the life's principles something to do with returns on investment? When you fall in love with someone, should there be a return on investment on that? When you do some exercises, physical exercises, should there be some return on investments on that? Are we channeling our efforts? Are we being motivated? And are we being inspired? to get returns on investments on any one of our efforts should that be the way life is channeled well to some degree yes think of a life that doesn't give you feedback think of a life that does not have an equal but opposite reaction for every action that you have what kind of life would that be And so in so doing, we are answering this question, this question we've been discussing in these episodes on this mini-series, why is there no profit in your purpose pursuit? And we've been discussing, even at the introduction section, why someone was saying that there there are people who have gone to schools and they have degrees, diplomas and certificates, but there is nothing to show from that kind of investment, let me put in brackets, yet. And the same thing applies with Papa's Pursuit. You know, people normally think that Papa's Pursuit is amorphous and that the only sure thing to do is to look for quote-unquote a job. You fail to realize that even those guys who are pursuing jobs or who went to school and so on and so forth are not necessarily enjoying that certainty that there is. So there are things that we need to do, there are principles that we need to put into place, there are attitudes we need to develop, there are basically strategies we need to build in order to see any returns on investments on our purpose pursuit. 
And we see that one of the reasons as to why there is no profit in your purpose pursuit, obviously, is because you are not necessarily charging. You feel like you don't need to charge because there was no effort expended. You enjoyed yourself while doing the purpose and you're passionate about it. So passionate that you had this, what I call psychic income, to the extent that you feel guilty when someone gives you monetary income. So in so doing, you do not charge. You do not have power enough to charge. That's why there is no money coming in. Money is not going to come in without you charging. The second reason we saw is basically related to the first one. And this one has something to do with planning and strategizing. Being intentional about creating a channel or a funnel through which the profit or the money that you're looking for is going to come. If you do not direct people that this is my funnel, this is the furrow through which the funds can come, then basically you're not going to collect. It's basically like rain is watering all over the place and you do not have containers to collect the rain. What do you end up with? You end up with spatters of raindrops here and there in the same place where you could have collected tongues upon tongues, barrels upon barrels of rain, of rain water. So that's the second reason. The third reason as to why there is no profit in your purpose pursuit is because you do not have products. You do not have services. You can have purpose, but if you don't have products and services, no one is going to interact with that purpose apart from yourself. You're going to be, you know, passionate. People will see your passion and so on and so forth. But where can they bite? Where can they get the benefit? What can make them change? What can cause a difference in their lives is going to be a product or is going to be a service if there is no product or service basically there's no going to be anyone paying for that purpose and then number four we saw that you do not have purpose you do not have profit in your purpose pursuit because you do not have a platform you've not branded yourself you've not created yourself a platform that elevates you above the noise and people will see that this is official maybe you're not even registered by the government of the day you don't pay taxes you don't have a website, you don't have a tax pin, whatever it is. You've not basically built a platform under which, upon which you can stand and voice your purpose and people will be able to see. And when people see that, they are drawn towards you. And when they are drawn towards you, then you're able to direct them to your products, direct them to your services, and direct them to where the funnel is and they can be able to pay as they interact with your purpose. So without a, a platform, you're not going to get any money out of your purpose pursuits. And then we also saw yesterday that the reason as to why there is no money coming into your life as you pursue your purpose is simply because you meddle. You are doing this, you start and then you stop. And basically, people cannot identify you with a single thing. You're a person of purpose, but in your heart, you know, I'm a person of purpose. I pursue this. But then at the outside, people are seeing different things. Today, you are selling vegetables and onions. Tomorrow, you are selling insurance. The next day, you're becoming a farmer. And then the next day, you're becoming a motivational speaker. And then the other day, you are teaching people how to write websites and whatever that means and people are wondering what in the world is this guy up to can't he just settle down and so no one is going to want to be interested with giving you any service any product i mean giving you any business if you are all over the place they want experts they want go-to persons they want gurus if you are not any one of those no one is going to pay for your purpose pursuit. Today, in the podcast, we will look at one more thing that I think is very critical, very important, and this is going to involve some kind of cash, some kind of effort into it. You do not have profit coming into your purpose because there is, quote-unquote, no push. You are not pushing your purpose out there. It's basically there is little or there is no marketing. Or if it's there, it is sporadic as if you're apologizing for the things that you're offering. And people find it difficult either to see you or to notice you. 
and they find it difficult to see the consistency that there is with your marketing because the last time you did the marketing was two months ago and even when you did it two months ago it was once just one day and then you kept quiet and probably the day that you did that marketing someone took notes and they did not have the necessary money to pay you and they wanted the service but now they have the money and they are not seeing anything that you're doing in the streets so they will look for someone who is marketing themselves even if they have the lousiest product seriously even if they had the lousiest service the guys who are marketing the guys who are telling the world about their product it doesn't matter how weird it is it doesn't matter how shallow it is but the guys who are telling the world about their products are the guys who are going to get money are the guys who are going to get customers so if you have little or no marketing you will not see people coming to you you don't have to be modest when it comes to this you are not necessarily tooting your own horn and it is not necessarily a wrong thing to toot your own horn brian tracy says that there are three major things that will make a business to succeed first of all you need a new product and that's what i've been talking about and then secondly he said you need a customer service and then the third thing that you need is a sales and a marketing strategy it has got to be there uh, friends it comes down to that you might be having the best of the best of products but if someone doesn't know about that of what use is that product and i know you tell me that there's this word of mouth uh, marketing and so on it works well when you mix all these marketing strategies together there can be word of mouth but you you are not in control of the word of mouth you are in control of what you can do with your marketing on a daily basis on all the social media channels on the radios and on the TVs and so on and so forth the more you keep on marketing the more you are in the consciousness of people and the more people are drawn to you the likelier it is to do business with you the more you keep saying what you're offering quoting your prizes quoting your benefits quoting the value add that you're bringing on the face of the earth so you need a new product you need a customer service you need a sales and a marketing strategy you cannot remain obscure and expect to earn from your craft basically it doesn't work that way people need to keep hearing that this is a purpose trainer this is a purpose coach this is a guy who has written a book about purpose this is a guy who has a purpose course if you wanted to learn anything about purpose this is the go to person they hear it in january they hear it in february they hear it in march in april in may in june in october they still hear the same damn thing because that's what purpose is you don't move away from your purpose you keep doing your purpose come rain come sunshine come covid-19 come whatever come ebola you are still doing what you are called to do and you are telling the whole wide world what you are doing so let people know who you are let people know where you are let people know what you do let people know what they can pay for what you're doing and by the way in terms of marketing when someone gives feedback and says i enjoy that course it helped me to discover my purpose what do you do you market that testimonial you pick it up and share with the world that this guy went through this thing that i'm telling you about and this is his honest feedback this is what he's saying about it or maybe by the way sometimes you come to that level where something doesn't work in your product and in your service what do you do do you defend yourself no you don't defend yourself at some level you can face the truth and you can say this is the feedback i got from people and this was not working and so on and so forth and so i took some time and i went and i rectified what wasn't working and now i'm offering for free to those guys who had purchased it so that they can replace what was not working that is putting yourself in the consciousness of people's minds that you're minding your craft you're charging for your craft you're making a difference for your craft and people are compensating you for that particular craft do this daily this is the flower that attracts the bee to the nectar the marketing strategy without it basically you will not see people flock 
to you to have them experience your products and your services that are related to your purpose pursuits so you do not have money when you're pursuing your purpose because you are not behaving as if your purpose pursuit is a business you're behaving as if your purpose pursuit is a spiritual thing and you cannot charge for a spiritual thing and so on and so forth and that's why you look around and people will tell you go and get a real job why are you seated here doing these things of purpose go and get a real job because you've not crafted these things and put these things in place tomorrow we are going to add one more reason as to why there is no profit in your purpose pursuit but until then do this one thing toot your own horn as long as you are alive bye bye A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.